interesting game and uh, today I continue my experiment when I try to make um, tutorials for dreams and uh, go through them uh, trying to understand and repeat what uh, uh, the explainer and maker of the tutor tutorial does. Uh, so uh, we continue with logic terminology tutorial and let's begin. Uh, first let's check, oh, I have more comments. That's really cool. I, I think one of my levels uh, is being promoted somewhere in dreams because people keep coming and keep commenting. Uh, great. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, but we'll do something else today. Oh. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. That's my testing level. And now we go to this part. Input, and then go to here. Because this one has ultra priority, which is front. And then it can switch back. And that's basically gates. Um, there's not much else you can do. That's where we finished the last time. Um, with these, I, I'm not entirely sure how to do gate sync, but they're pretty complicated. All right, next is the signal manipulator, and the signal manipulator can be used to do a lot of things. Really complicated. It's it's a sister gadget is the signal generator. This is basically kind of doing the same thing, but... Wait, 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 so where is that signal generator? It's, I guess, here, yeah. But instead of, like, generating a signal, it is manipulating one. Um, so, for example, you can set an input to smoothly go up and to smoothly go down. So if you input 1 here, for example, it's going to make a little graphic here. So we're going to have 1, and the input on the left is going to be 1, but this one goes up over time to reach 1, and when you turn it off... It's... Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I didn't get anything. So you've made it uh, somehow one. Yeah, you made it one. Smoothly go up and to smoothly go down. So if you input one. Ah, so you made, made both. Uh, change with value so um, so if we're gonna connect this to this and this to this what's gonna happen on here for example it's gonna make a little graphic here so we're gonna have one and the input on the left it's going to be 1, but this one goes up over time to reach 1. And when you turn it off, it's going to do the same thing to go to 0. It's going to slowly fall to 0. So that's smooth rise and smooth... This didn't happen, my man. Oh, maybe, maybe again because my time is stopped. Let's check it out. That's very important stuff so if we turn on oh yeah mm, but uh, only the second one works this way did it happen with you 
two. I'm gonna just fall. Okay, you reach one. And the input is gonna make a little graphic here. So we're gonna have one, and the input on the left is gonna be one, but this one goes up over time to you reach one. And when you turn it off, it's gonna do the same thing to go to zero. Right. It's gonna That's slowly three. fall to zero. So that's smooth rise and smooth fall. Um, freeze output basically means to freeze it. So if I set this to higher time, like 4.2, and then I freeze it, it's going to stay at that value. So you can use that to pause. Right? And then okay. pulse on input on means instead of being a constant signal, it's going to pulse. You can also do the smooth rise and the smooth fall. So it's going to go up and then down very quickly instead of being a constant on value. Invert output is not very intuitive. Basically... Yeah, yeah, wait. So what the impulse does again. Uh, so it gives just uh, a little bit of on and then off, like on function here. Mm. Okay, and uh, invert. It's invert. But still, uh, funny thing, uh, the left one doesn't work smoothly at all. So why do we smooth fall, smooth rise? Ah, it's only for the second one. Ah, so it's the converted signal. Yeah, I understand now. So that's the one you get from the switch, turning on and off. And that's how it converts the signal, uh, making it smoother. That's a very cool thing, actually. It's kind of like a knot gate, but not really. Um, so turning it on is going to have it turned off. And then turning it off is going to have it be turned on. I think that's like just zero to one and stuff like that. Uh, of course, there's still the smoothing. And then over here is the customer mapper. And this is where it gets really complicated. Um, wow. It's not very intuitive, but you would probably be able to figure this out by reading the descriptions of everything. Edge mode is basically in a more complicated thing of pulse on, on input on. Because you can pulse it on, <laughs> my God. Pulse it off, pulse at on or off. Toggle, so it can be like a button. Uh, at on, toggle output and off, and toggle output and on or off. And from here, up here you can change the input to be like zero to one, and you can make it from zero to 100 or from one to zero you can flip the values as well and of course you can shape things and it's all very very complicated in here it needs its own like explanation basically i think i actually have a video about it i'm not entirely sure yeah that's complicated for sure uh but uh to be honest, I understand a little bit because uh, I guess what these things do, they just change the variables in the function and the cha they change the way function work and uh, that's pretty cool. But that's actually a school mathematics. Uh, we have my friends have a video on that uh, on how they use simple um, cubic functions uh, I don't know how they are really called in English but uh, that's uh, uh, 
they uh, how how they use simple mathematical functions to um, make uh, generated snow like uh, generate the uh, surface of the snow and uh, how they use that in Houdini that's very uh, very complicated 3d software where you have to be a programmer you just have to program and uh, that's extremely interesting but uh, if I would have another life <laughs> I would really spend it trying to uh, master Houdini because they make uh, one hell of uh, computer graphics and they are one of the best uh, graphics studio in the world and uh, that means something I guess but uh, I'm playing dreams I'm not going this far and then from that is a timer very simple if nothing is plugged into the start timer, it's going to start automatically. Wait, wait. Where did you get that? I guess it's here. Yeah. And then from that, we have a timer, very simple. If nothing is plugged into the start timer, it's gonna start automatically. I think, yeah. And there's different timer types, so this counts up. So it's gonna go from zero to the target time. Uh, what's the... What's the hot key for tweak? Huh? Is there any close? Uh, that's clone. Oh, so maybe R one X, no. R one R two, no. So R one, yeah, the mm, square square works for the V tweak. Okay, let's continue. Or there is speed, zero, zero, yeah. And there's different timer types, so this counts up. So it's gonna go from zero to the target time. Or there is speed. Um, and basically this changes with whatever this is. So if this is negative, make this a and it can go backward. So that, that, and then of course negative, and it can go back. That's what speed is, and position. Sorry, I didn't get what speed is. Uh... So. You say that if you oh. off value still don't get it actually, and of course, negative and this. Is zero to the target time, or there is speed, um, and basically this changes with whatever this is. So if this is negative, make this, a, and it can go backward. 
So that, that, and then of course negative, and then go back. That's what speed is, and positional is kind of like not very intuitive, but basically if you turn it on, it'll go forward. If you turn it off, it'll go back. Pretty, pretty good. But then there's also a countdown. Kind of weird because mm -hmm. you need to force the current time to be reversed, and then you press it. There's not really a good way from what I can tell. That it. So if we go into this and then reset it, you can see it doesn't go. Even though it's at the countdown. Um, there's a start timer, timer finish, so when it gets to the end, is this. It'll output, so I don't know if it'll go, if it'll pulse when it's done counting down. It will. Okay. Reset timer resets it to zero. Timer output is 0 to 1 scale on how finished it is. Timer finished is a 0 to 1, just absolute. 0 is it's anywhere between counting and not doing anything. And then 1 means it's completely full, done count. Right? And then the calculator. Now. Calculator. Oh yeah, that's it. I think I, I understand it. The concept of calculation. A lot of different math stuff. Basically, this is side. This is the left side, operand one, and this is the right side, operand two. There's add, subtract, multiply, divide. Mm -hmm. Greater than equals less than remainder after division. So this would be A divided by B, and then there's minimum. Some of these only have one value. So I think minimum, not entire. Return whichever is smaller of operand one and operand. If A is smaller, it'll output A. If B is smaller, it'll output B. And then there's maximum, of course, power of, round down, round, round up, absolute value. These bottom I four, was good in it. Uh, only take one value, A, of A and B. All right, and then we have mic chip. Uh, that's what this is. I've been using microchip full time. And then we have a node. A node is basically a um, gadget that has an input and output, and it just basically allows input to travel to the output. And this is helpful because you can use nodes to make outputs on microchips. So that node that we had is now a port on this microchip, which is really useful if you want to publish microchips to the driver. Mm hmm so if we close there is a node cool first let other people use it so you can have input ports output ports which basically is the node on the left side will be a input port and will allow you to get things from outside of the microchip as if it was a port. Yeah. And then you have the output, which is outputting value that it's you It's pretty decide. late, I'm sorry. And no port is just a pass through, basically, what it, which shows first saying. And from here, it's just... Sorry, did you put anything? Oh, no, you didn't. 
you just made it like this. No port is just a pass through, basically. What it, which shows first saying, and from here it's just basically just outputting the value from one side to the other. And you can also turn these off, so you can use these to make like better AND gates, kind of. Like you can use this as a pass through AND gate, so instead of like being a v value of 0 to 1 with an AND gate, you can output the actual value that you want instead of just 1. And that's basically nodes. And I think I've already gone over splitters and mirrors. But splitters take a fat. No, you didn't. Wire, and it will output it to multiple thin wires. And a combiner will take multiple thin wires and turn it into a fat wire. And then variables. Variables are very... No, no, no. no, no. Wait. So input wire? Oh. Render complete. Uh, output A. Can, can, can we make another one? Positive, negative. How did you make more? Huh? Put it to multiple thin wires. I think I've already gone over splitters and mirrors. But splitters take a fat wire and it will output it to multiple thin wires. And a combiner will take multiple thin wires and turn it into a fat wire. Okay, so what's the difference with fat and small wires, huh? That's what you didn't say. And then variables. Variables are very important um, if you want to make something like an RPG. Because you can use variables to make like an inventory uh, or stuff like um, the status of a quest. And oh, yeah, once I tried to make an inventory in uh, Unreal Engine and that was hell <laughs> I tell you because uh, low-level programming of such stuff requires you to actually uh, understand how to work with memory and that's what I don't want to do in my life <laughs> complex stuff like that so by default their initial value is zero the minimum value that they can have is negative 1000 and the maximum value is 1000 and a variable can persist in a dream meaning that it can exist even after you close the dream so if you quit the dream the data that is stored in this variable is going to stay the same when you come back. So you can use this as a persistent inventory or any manner of things that you want to save in a dream. So you can make anything these basically uh, for a save system. And multiplayer means that it'll be a different variable for each player in the scene. And this is another like special named thing, so you have to name variables. 
and that's how you are able to actually store the data. You can't just have a variable that's not named or else that won't work. There's also current value uh, is the current value and then increased means that somewhere in the scene a variable modifier caused this to go up. Decrease is the same thing when it caused it to go down. And variable modifiers um, take a name of a variable and you're able to either set the variable of and variable mod decrease is the same thing when it caused it to go yeah so y you imported something else also go down and variable modifiers um, take a name of a variable and you're able to either set the variable, get the variable, add to the variable, and it's also subtract from it as well, or you can reset the variable. And there is one powered on, which is basically once when this is turned on, or Continuously while powered means it'll constantly do the operation that you set and If you do set You can set a value here. Wow, I'm actually doing it. <laughs> oh My god Do you see that? It's like six or eight line of codes, as I remember. But it's great that programming becoming it become became like this because I can see that right now. Uh, my biggest prob program prob 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 problem with programming was that uh, I don't see things. I I just have to imagine that I have that kind of number uh, saved in memory and I can add to it by this vari variable but now I can see that and that's completely different story for me because I'm a visual guy I totally work with visual stuff and I didn't understand uh, a lot of algebra but geometry was my thing and that's why I started doing 3d graphics because I could see things and I, and I really like fourth dimensional mathematics because I can see it even in a projection that's very cool like I can't imagine what kind of uh, society will be formed from people who uh, will grow up with this game because this this is a game changer actually it brings the world of programming to everyone it's so it's so available it's so uh, easy to get and understand it's so cool you're living in a perfect and I okay I'm too I'm too I'm here with you guys I, we are living in a perfect reality right now in uh, in terms of learning programming and if you do add, you can also set a value here. Get and reset, however, do not have an operation value. And they are very complex. You can use them for many things. And they're... Oh, let's, let's, um, that's maximum for it. Uh... Hmm. I didn't reset it. Cool. They're very important, um, and I 
think I talk about them more in the RPG series if you're interested in that. Thanks, Neon. That was cool. Uh, I will definitely watch more of this. Thank you, guys. Next time we'll do some other tutorial and uh, we'll try to understand dreams more. Thank you. Max out.